What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video where we have massive transfer updates on Enzo Fernandez and also Sofian Amrabat and all the latest Liverpool news. Happy New Year to you guys, let me know do you have any New Year's resolutions in the comments below and leave a like on this video if you enjoy these transfer news updates and subscribe if you haven't already so you never miss the latest updates on Liverpool FC in the new year and all year long I will keep you posted on what is going on at Liverpool FC. And Enzo Fernandez, it looks like he is on the verge of joining Chelsea because Portuguese transfer insider Pedro Almeida tweeted that Benfica and Chelsea are close to reaching a full agreement because uh, Chelsea are willing to pay the release clause of Enzo Fernandez in the January transfer window. He said Benfica and Chelsea are in the final stages of the deal for Enzo Fernandez. In total, the player transfer could be close to even more than 130 million euros with potential add-ons. Enzo has already given green light to the agent to close the deal with Chelsea and Ben Jacobs, ben Jacobs said that it's not true that Liverpool FC have bid for Enzo Fernandez. Chelsea are seriously exploring the situation and they want a deal with more preferable payment terms. Of course they don't want to pay the full release clause in full at the front end of the deal. If they offer higher than the release clause to get this Benfica aren't obligated to accept. Benfica really want to keep Fernandez until at least uh, last, at least the summer because Benfica president Rui Costa said we don't want to give up Enzo Fernandez in January but we are willing to please the boy in the event of a 120 million euro offer. Benfica basically want the 120 million euro up front paid full the release clause and then Enzo Fernandez can go and of course Chel even Chelsea don't have that money sitting on, on their bank account in a full so they are willing to pay a little bit more for Enzo Fernandez and then structure the payment so they have to only pay uh, maybe 130 million euros in installments with bonuses and add-ons but Benfica are smart they are they know that a lot of clubs want Enzo Fernandez and they are saying either pay the release clause in January or wait until the summer to sign Enzo Fernandez because Benfica are eight points clear in the Portuguese league and they are also through in the Champions League. They will play Club Bruges, I think, so uh, they have a great chance to play in the quarterfinals of the Champions League and they are still in the Portuguese Cup as well. So Benfica want to win as many trophies as possible. And I'm a little bit sad, of course, that Liverpool are not in for him right now, it looks like, because, yeah, Liverpool probably don't want to pay 120 million euros for Enzo Fernandez in January transfer because then we might not have the money in the summer for Jude Bellingham. I think it's an absolute must for Liverpool to sign a midfielder in the January transfer window. You saw how easily Leicester City sometimes cut through our midfield and Leicester City are nowhere near the best team in the Premier League and if they are so easily going through the Liverpool midfield it's pretty evident that Liverpool absolutely have to sign a midfielder in the January transfer window and Fabrizio also said that uh, there were no, no direct contract, uh, contacts uh, today between Chelsea and Benfica for Enzo Fernandez. It will be discussed again tomorrow and next week. The deal is advanced. Chelsea are still waiting for Benfica's final decision. Chelsea are insisting that they feel that the deal can be closed next week. And of course Liverpool have alternatives to pursue and Sofia Amrabat is one of a few alternatives that Liverpool want to sign and we will talk about that in a little bit more detail later on in this video and apparently Chelsea also agreed a deal for Benoit Badi Achille the Monaco centre-back who is a very talented like 22 23 year old centre-back who is very highly rated in France so Chelsea again are spending massive amounts of money and Liverpool should spend big amounts of money as well in this January transfer window yes we signed Cody Gakpo but that's not really the area <coughs> where Liverpool desperately need a player right now yes we don't don't have a left winger fit at the moment but we still we still have Luis Diaz we still have Diogo Jota they're both injured right now yes the Cody Gakpo transfer is great but Liverpool need a midfielder I've been keep banging on about on, on this drum that Liverpool absolutely have to sign a midfielder in the January transfer otherwise we are risking 
not making the top four. And if we don't make the top four, then there is no way Jude Bellingham will sign for Liverpool in the summer transfer window. But feel free to disagree with me in the comments below. Let's make it a debate. Let me know what do you think about this current situation. And it looks like Liverpool want to make this big, big uh, transfer um, for a midfielder in the summer transfer window but I think we need at least three midfielders so why not bring in somebody who is uh, right now who maybe is not a hundred million pounds worth but who is around 40-50 million Liverpool still can sign Jude Bellingham uh, in the summer transfer window after signing another midfielder in the January transfer window <coughs> it looks like this is the same stance that Real Madrid are taking that they would wait until the summer if, to see if Enzo Fernandez is still available right now Liverpool are not interested in paying 120 million euros up front for Enzo Fernandez and uh, do you think that's understandable? Do you think we are saving the money for the Jude Bellingham transfer deal? What is Liverpool's strategy? Let me know in the comments below. And Liverpool are definitely interested in a midfielder. Jurgen Klopp said that we know what we want to do in the January transfer window and we will see if we can do it. It's about money of course but it's also how it always was. It's about the right players and Liverpool clearly want a very high caliber midfielder or two it's just whether the right player is available on the right terms and if the club who owns the player, the player's rights I mean, to play, if they are willing to do the deal in the January transfer window or not. Of course the January transfer window is notoriously difficult, that's why I was so disappointed that Liverpool didn't sign a midfielder in the summer. And Jamie Carragher said this about Liverpool's midfield um, needs. Jude Bellingham is a midfielder who likes to get forward, score goals get assists and it would be fantastic if Liverpool could get him but they really need a Wijnaldum type of figure to come in. This midfield isn't what you expect or what Jurgen Klopp really wants. It's not just about certain players and a certain age because the younger players are more technical than high energy. I talk about Harvey Elliott, Fabio Carvalho. It feels like Liverpool's midfield isn't high energy at the moment. There's talk of looking to bring in Jude Bellingham. Why wouldn't you? He's a great player but they also need another midfielder to help them defensively we need a runner, we need a player who can run for days. Since Gini Vinadum left Liverpool, as strange as it sounds, Liverpool's midfield haven't been the same. We didn't have that, we don't, don't have that midfield dynamo of uh, Gini Vinadum. And according to Italian newspaper Corriere dello Sport, Jurgen Klopp is pushing to help Liverpool land their second January signing in the form of Fiorentina's Sofian Abrabat. This update comes courtesy of uh, the Italian newspaper. He's, they are claiming that uh, Amrabat is also being tracked by Tottenham, Atletico Madrid, Sevilla, Barcelona. There are conflicts in more recent reports regarding the Merseysiders ability to land another addition to the squad beyond Cody Gakpo, which may present something of an additional obstacle, the positive form of Fabinho will offer encouragement going forward into the remainder of the second half of the season. There has to be some serious concern among decision makers at Anfield given the clear drop-off uh, during uh, the Brazilians absence away from the squad. And uh, yes, Jordan Anderson generally is uh, very competent but this season he has been very very up and down, very inconsistent. He has so many games where he just wasn't on it. He he wasn't good enough, he wasn't convincing enough. Leicester City was another example of why Jordan Hens is probably over the hill, he's probably past his best and a bit of uh, just 35 million could get the Omrabat deal done and uh, it's, it, uh, for, of course it's uh, entirely possible that Amrabat would be available in the summer but Liverpool need a midfielder right now and I think Amrabat with his uh, tireless running and uh, brilliant intensity that he has shown in the World Cup it's a no-brainer to bring somebody in like him for 35-40 million who could help Liverpool right now and who could come in and, and really like uh, increase the intensity of Liverpool's um, midfield because right now we are not intense enough. I mean even Trent Alexander-Arnold admitted that Liverpool just weren't on it. We didn't have needed intensity against Leicester City. 
This is what he said. I think we definitely pride ourselves on our intensity, especially in the first 15 to 20 minutes against Leicester City. That just wasn't there today at all, to be honest. It was a slow, lethargic game and a lethargic start to the game from us. The intensity wasn't there and that's what we are good at and we just haven't brought that today. So it's one we need to think about as to why that has, that has happened. But no excuses, we got the three points in the end. But Liverpool got very lucky with the two own goals because the strikers Salah and Nunez missed all the chances that Liverpool created and we created some big ones so hopefully Liverpool will find their shooting boots uh, scoring boots sorry against Brentford and I'm hearing that Brentford might miss Ivan Tony on uh, tomorrow so uh, that that is a huge advantage for Liverpool but Brentford are still a very dangerous team they beat West Ham away 2-0 and they also almost beat Tottenham Tottenham required a heroic comeback from 2-0 down so Brentford are a dangerous side and we have to be very very careful against them and Paul Merson uh, the Sky Sports pundit who I pretty much uh, really like for his opinions and uh, his uh, witty humor he said that uh, Liverpool are making a big mistake uh, if they don't sign a midfielder Liverpool are signing Cody Gakpo but they should have signed some midfielders will he even play when everybody is fit I think Cody Gakpo will be fifth choice for Liverpool in forward areas Paul Merson said Liverpool have gone top heavy up front but their midfield is short they have so many attacking forwards but I don't think their midfield is good enough and I fully agree with Paul Merson if Liverpool don't sign a midfielder that's uh, like suicide uh, in terms of the Premier League because even Aston Villa are outspending us in the last like three years in the transfer market that is not right and Liverpool need serious investment and, and if the owners FSG are not ready to invest then just sell the club and get out sell the club to someone who is willing to invest and who is willing to to have what it takes for, to make Liverpool competitive enough at the top end of the Premier League. I will be honest, it's very painful to see that uh, Man City are struggling for consistency and uh, Arsenal are now 7 points ahead of Man City and if Liverpool signed a world-class midfielder in the summer we could be there around in and around Man City we should be a lot closer to them I think Liverpool made a huge error of judgment not signing midfielder in the summer transfer window but it's inexcusable we know now for six months that Liverpool absolutely desperately need a midfielder so if we don't sign one in January the Liverpool's season will be a shambles and we won't win another trophy this season I'm pretty much guarantee that if we don't sign a midfielder Trent Ranks Ronald also said this on Darwin Nunez. You will get people who will say he has missed a few chances and he has missed a few one-on-ones and maybe he should have talked the second goal away but he's getting himself in those positions and when the goals do come I'm sure they will come like London buses. We are just waiting for that but he's a fantastic lad and he's an outstanding player as well and uh, with Darwin Nunez creating and, and getting into so many goal scoring opportunities it's only a matter of time when he starts uh, scoring again. He said, um, Trent said, uh, people will, will judge Darwin on his goals and that's part of being a striker, that's part of life. But I think he, he can keep walking off the pitch with his head held high because he's getting in the positions are really, really hurting the opposition. He's such a threat. He's getting in behind. He's holding the ball up. He's flicking balls on. He's doing everything that the manager has asked of him. He's pressing his attitude, his desire. You can't question anyone of it. So yeah, I, I really, really hope that Darwin Nunez will come good sooner or later because we, we desperately need his goals, that's for sure. And Trent said also after the Leicester win that we, did, we feel positive. Like I said, three points is three points. We have put ourselves in a good position, but we will keep chipping away and hoping that people drop points around us. We are still not even halfway through the season. So there are still a lot of games to play and a lot of things can happen. We found ourselves in quite a similar position position last year chasing Man City at this time of year when we were 10 or 11 points behind them but people do drop points no one is going to go unbeaten and not drop any points from now until the end of the season hopefully it's us who do that but it's unlikely any team will so we have got to make sure we are in positions to pounce when th teams drop points again around us but Liverpool's dreadful start basically handicaps them and I think Liverpool are definitely out of the title race we are in the race to maybe finish second or third at best but Liverpool need to find this consistency and we need a midfield reinforcement who can run for days, a Vinaldun type of player, box-to-box -box midfielder, Amrabat could be 
an easy solution because he's playing at a club like Fiorentina who would accept a decent bid from Liverpool and Amrabat would love to play for Liverpool and I think we need uh, uh, his legs uh, and running ability and intensity to help Liverpool change the midfield dynamic because at the moment it's uh, really up and down and not good enough. Let me know what you think in the comments below and thanks for watching. Happy New Year guys. Have a lovely 2023. See you later. Goodbye.